What is going on my friends? Hank here from Spruce and Brews Scale Modeling. And today we're going to be painting up this great 135 scale Vietnam War USGI figure from Bravo 6. We'll take a special focus today on practicing our skills painting black and brown skin tones, a very important skill to have in this hobby, as our little way of recognizing Black History Month and the more than 300,000 African Americans who served our country during the Vietnam War. As always, we'll have links in the description below to all the products we use today if you'd like to follow along at home. And with that said, let's hop right into it. Alright guys, so here's the figure we'll be painting up today. Bravo 6 makes some fantastic resin figures and I'd highly recommend checking them out if you haven't done so already. To start here, I've primed this guy up in flat black and left his helmet off on a separate painting jig so we can do some detail work on that later. We're going to start painting today with some ammo camo green and try to spray this all over his main uniform and helmet cover to give us a nice solid color to work with. This will also help save us a little brush painting work down the road. We'll start our brush painting work with our skin tone. Our first color will be this Vallejo Dark Rust and that's going to serve as our base coat as we build up to our final flesh tone today. We want to thin this down with a little bit of tap water and then brush it on in a nice thin layer all over our exposed skin. Once we have a nice base down, we're going to do something new today and create a very thin wash with some flat black paint. We want to thin this way down with some tap water and we're going to use it to do a little artificial shadow work a bit earlier in the process than we usually would. Credit to the Hobby Grotto on YouTube for this tip. So we'll take our nice thin wash and brush this all over the exposed skin we just painted. That's going to flow into all the little nooks and crannies and help create some depth and shadow to our face sculpt and allow us to exclusively focus on highlights as we move forward through the process. While we've got our flat black out, let's also just paint in his hair real quick. This will be done with our full strength undiluted black, not the watered down version we just mixed. Our wash is going to dry very quickly since it's acrylic, so next we're going to take our original dark rust again and we're just going to focus on the raised areas and flat surfaces of the face. So our cheekbones, our forehead, our nose, and our chin. This will help accentuate that shadow wash even more. And then we're going to do about a 50-50 mix of dark rust with some red leather. This will give us a nice warm tone that we'll use to keep building up those highlights and add a little life to our flesh. We want to focus this warm color again on some of the larger raised surfaces of the face, the forehead and the cheekbones in particular. And next we're going to mix some medium brown with that same red leather to create an even lighter highlight. And with this, we're just going to gently hit the bridge of his nose, the very highest parts of his cheekbones, and the bottom of his chin just to add a little pop of light there. And of course, we can't forget this great 60s mustache. We can draw that and RGI's eyebrows in with some flat black. And with that done, our soldier skin is looking pretty good. As you move through this process, you can repeat these same steps on any other exposed skin, which was just the hands with this particular figure. Moving down to our uniform, we're going to first paint up our GI's M55 flak vest, and for this we're just going to use a bit of good old olive drab. Don't worry about overpainting onto his bandoliers, because we're going to come back and get those in just a bit, but try not to overpaint onto his fatigues if you can at all. Once our vest is all painted up, we can switch gears and start picking out some of his individual equipment. For all of his external pouches and personal equipment, we can use a bit of green-gray just to provide some contrast from the other greens and drabs we've already used. You 
You can see that this adds a nice bit of interest and stands out well from our regular fatigue camo green. Our GI carries an M79 grenade launcher, so he's pretty heavily slung with bandoliers to carry all the ammo for that weapon. We can carefully paint those in with a bit of khaki once again to help stand out from our other greens and drabs. Most of this equipment realistically would have been various shades of olive drab, but that's not too much fun to look at in 135 scale, so we've got to exaggerate our colors a little bit. With that tedious job out of the way, we can move on to some of the final bits of gear carried by RGI here. First of which will be his leather holster for his 45 sidearm. We can brush that in with a little bit of flat black. And moving to his back, we can brush in the scabbard for his K-Bar knife with some red leather. Chocolate brown looks pretty good for the K-Bar handle itself. Moving down to the M79 grenade launcher, we can brush in the wooden stock with some tan earth. The M79, known as the Thumper or Blooper to GIs in the field, could fire a wide range of 40mm grenade rounds, including explosive, anti-personnel, smoke, buckshot, flechette, and flare rounds. It could pretty easily be operated by one soldier and saw service throughout the Vietnam War and beyond. The main grenade tube and rear of our stock can be painted with the same flat black. Moving down to our jungle boots, we'll start by using some green-gray for the upper canvas portion of the boots. And once those sections are done, you can paint in the bottom leather portions of the boot with, you guessed it, our flat black. Pretty simple to paint up these iconic boots and make them look pretty good. A few final details on our equipment here. We can use a little white aluminum to accent the lid of our canteen. And we can do a little dry brushing of our M79 to help pop that weapon a little bit. And with that, the main paint job of our body is done, so now we just need to finish up our helmet before we move on to weathering. Hey again friends, hope you're enjoying today's tutorial so far. Just a quick reminder to please hit that subscribe button so you'll be the first to know about new scale modeling tutorials, history chats, and scale modeling news videos coming out each and every week right here on Spurs and Brews Scale Modeling. I really appreciate your support, thank you so much, and let's hop right back into the lesson. So with our helmet already painted in the same camo green as our GI's fatigues, we just need to paint in the camo bits. The Mitchell pattern helmet cover was used by GIs throughout the conflict and was made up of various greens and khaki soft edge blotches. So we'll start by carefully drawing in our first color of camo with some Luftwaffe dark green. Next we'll grab some khaki and repeat the same process. It's handy to have a reference photo in front of you to help draw some inspiration from. We just want to keep these blotches irregular in shape and relatively evenly scattered across the helmet. And for our final color, we'll grab some green-gray and add a few more highlight blotches. These Mitchell pattern covers are super iconic, and with just a few quick steps, you can see how easy it is to replicate this look. A few more details to tackle here. We can take some flat black and very carefully pencil in our helmet band that goes around the Mitchell cover. Just take your time here, hold your breath, and do your best. For our final touch on the helmet, we can grab some gold leaf and brush in the top of our grenade round tucked into the helmet band. The high explosive grenades were gold tipped, so I went with that for this particular round. 
And with our helmet complete, now it's time for weathering. We're gonna do a simple dark wash on this GI. Just don't forget to spray your figure with a gloss varnish coat prior to weathering to protect all of our work so far. We wanna brush some of the enamel dark wash all over this figure. Don't worry about being messy because we're gonna remove all of the excess wash in just a second with some enamel thinner. The thinner helps our wash flow into all the nooks and crannies where we'd want shading to go, and it helps us pull off and clean up any excess that we don't want on our figure. Now we're going to want to let our figure sit overnight so all that enamel wash can dry completely like you see here, and then we're going to hit him again with one more gloss varnish coat to seal all that in. Once our varnish coat is dried, it's finally time to give our GI his helmet. We can easily glue that into place with a little bit of super glue. And once that's attached, we just need to spray our figure with a matte varnish coat to knock down the shininess and give our figure a final layer of protection. And just like that, you've got yourself a realistic Vietnam War era USGI ready to go with your latest armor or diorama build. If you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It is the single biggest thing you can do to support me and my work here on the channel. And if you'd like to check out some more scale modeling tutorials, you can do so right here. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.